Hello and welcome to POLS 1101 American Government. This is Dr. Carl Snook. Sitting beside me is my daughter Zanna. Hi. Uh, That's me. Zanna is a Zanna's going to be a sixth grader this year, going to start middle school. Um, and from time to time, we'll we'll say hi to her as the semester goes along. But for right now, we'll ask her to take her leave so that we can go ahead and uh, uh, get started on the material. Yeah. So say goodbye, Zanna. Bye. All right. So, so the first module we're going to talk about um, mostly is just going to get you started on the semester. Uh, try to spend a good deal of time looking at the syllabus. It kind of represents the rules for the course. It'll answer a lot of questions. Uh, I would say that whenever an instructor dedicates a week of an eight-week course to any material, then you should think of it as rather important material. Uh, so uh, during this week, you'll have an opportunity to look at uh, the rules of the course, what's going on with the course. Uh, you'll get a chance to read my personal introduction, and you'll also be able to, uh, to write one of your own. I would like it too if you would read everybody's introduction, or at least a handful of the introductions, and respond to them and start to try to build a learning community amongst yourselves. Uh, it's okay uh, for you to interact outside of class if you desire. Uh, just remember that I should probably be the first person that you go to if you're trying to get an understanding of an assignment or something like that. I'm the person who, um, who knows what I meant to say. And so um, maybe I'm the best person to try to translate that for us. Uh, as you'll see, if you're looking at the syllabus, uh, I'm going to have online office hours between 10 and 11 o'clock on Mondays and Wednesdays. And obviously I'll meet with anybody um, via Teams at any time that you want to set an appointment so long as maybe I'm not out of town or, or anything like that. Uh, so, we'll, so I'm saying Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 to 11 or by appointment. Now that's not the only time, so I'll be checking my email. One of the things I'm going to try to do a lot this semester is uh, go about my business, but give myself the little notifications on the phone. And if you need to get in touch with me and uh, I get a moment or two, I'll try to respond. Um, certainly uh, within 24 hours, um, an exception might be if you contact me on, you know, Saturday afternoon, you might not have me get back to you until Sunday evening or something like that. But my goal is to be as accessible as possible and to be as helpful as possible. Uh, one of the big mistakes people seem to make in a online summer course is either they uh, don't take the course too seriously or they don't get into the opportunity uh, to, to learn the excitement of actually uh, gathering knowledge during uh, their summer, right? If, if your goal is to not learn anything at all, but to still get an A, um, you probably won't get the A. You might pass the course, but if you don't learn anything, I, I want you all to succeed. Uh, I've, I've put my, uh, my personal phone number on the syllabus. I uh, am not going to be in the office during the summertime. I'm just going to run the course from my home, Microsoft Teams, uh, telephone calls, and obviously emails, right? Uh, if you would think of, um, if you would think of the opportunity to send me an email, it has to take up some of the space of, well, what would happen if I just asked him a question at the end of class, right? If you have a face-to-face -face course, uh, there's a lot of times you come down to the front at the end of the um, the lecture or discussion that we have in class and you you just ask me a question well feel just as free to send me an email as you would have otherwise to uh, send me a question um, in class or give me a question in class now i prefer that my my messages from you uh, come through the campus email rather than through the uh, d2l page so there'll be a place on D2L for you to send me a message. Uh, please don't do that. 
what happens is that if you send me a message through D2L, it looks like a message from my campus email. At least I get it through my campus email. I respond to your message, but then um, you can't send it back from the campus email to D2L and it will bounce back to me. And of course, if I'm, you know, if I'm away from the desk or I am uh, not paying a lot of attention, it could be several hours where I thought I've responded to your problem before I get the message that bounces back that says this was undeliverable. So it's much more convenient for all of us if you just send it through the campus email to begin with. And uh, like I said, I'll try to get back to everybody in less than 24 hours, sometimes in almost real time, because I will have my, my email alerts going. So uh, this semester, uh, we are going to be using the Logic of American Politics textbook. That's the Cornell, Jacobson, Kuser, and Vavrick book. Um, if you use any of the editions, the uh, ninth or 10th, preferably, uh, you should be fine. Uh, keep in mind that if you're using an edition from 2018 or 2020, that some of the characters have changed, right? Uh, they, they didn't know for a fact that uh, Donald Trump wasn't going to be the president in 2021 and 2022 until, in, until after the election. So if you write, if you are reading a book from before the 2020 election, you're going to, uh, you, you, might, you might have the wrong person. Um, I would also say uh, that um, a lot of the information, a lot of the key terms, they stay the same from edition to edition, and it's only over the course of several years that they change. So um, if you decide to save a little bit of money by getting the ninth or the eighth edition, you're probably okay, so long as you continue to um, keep track of who holds various offices. And there'll be some questions involving who's the Speaker of the House, who's the Vice President, who's the uh, Secretary of State that you might want to know uh, this semester. So um, keep that up to date. We're not going to have exactly uh, current events quizzes. We're, we're not going to have current events quizzes, but um, knowing who these people are um, might be questions that you have. Also, uh, you should have a computer where you have access to, um, to uh, you, uh, YouTube, um, everybody, I suppose, has access to YouTube through their computer, unless their computer just doesn't work very well. But some of the videos that we're going to be watching, including this one, right, uh, are originally YouTube videos. Uh, so you need to uh, make sure that you can access that and that the computer doesn't lock up. Um, they should all be closed captioned if you need that. Uh, it's also sometimes useful if you're sitting in a room full of people who are who are talking or, or there's a television going that you can uh, turn off the sound and close caption and sort of read along but still be part of your, your, your friendship group or your family. Uh, the syllabus talks a little bit about grading. The grading will be out of 400 points this semester. We're going to have six written discussions. Uh, what will happen is you'll watch a video, uh, you will, uh, you'll respond uh, to what you heard in the video. You'll also respond to what other people are writing, just as though we were having an in-class discussion. And people who contribute and, and uh, engage uh, will, will get full credit for these. It's a nice way to help your grade. Now, there's not going to be extensions, right? So if you don't do the discussion, don't expect at the end of the semester to just write six discussions and send them to me by email. You need to keep up right along. But so long as you do that, as long as you engage the discussions, as long as you read what others are writing and, and add to the group discussion, uh, you will get full credit. Uh, there will also be eight quizzes on course material. One of the quizzes will actually involve the syllabus. Uh, so once you've read through the syllabus, it, all quizzes and all exams in this course are open book and open note. Uh, so have the syllabus with you and complete the questions. 
Um, that's the main grade you're going to get for module one is your personal introduction, which will be the first discussion, and your, your quiz grade for, um, for module one, which will be on the syllabus. We're going to have a, a, a nice little assignment. I, I enjoy it. It's, uh, it's a top 10. I, I've become fascinated with top 10 lists in recent years. And uh, because this is a political science course, I thought we would look at something uh, involving top 10 uh, people in American politics. And in this case, who are the top 10 most powerful women in American politics? And it will be, I believe, the module three where you'll get the information on doing this assignment and it, the assignment will be due the next to last week of the course. So you're going to have about four weeks where you're going to look and discover who the most powerful women are in American politics, largely in your opinion. Uh, but beyond that, you'll have to defend your opinion. And what I'll do is I'll give you better instructions, more complete instructions on that at a later time. But be aware, and if you start to build in your mind, think about what is meant by power. The definition of power is going to be in module two, when we look at chapters one, two, and three. In chapter one, there'll be a definition of power. Uh, you can also look at what some of your own definitions of power are. I want to steer away. We're not talking about fame. We're not talking about uh, importance, right? Somebody could be important because they were the first person to achieve something. Um, that's not the same as power. Sometimes you could be the least powerful person to ever achieve something while still being the first. Um, anyway, we, we will also have a couple lessons involving uh, that assignment. So. I won't go into too much more detail. We will also have a midterm uh, after the first half of the course that covers chapters one through six and chapter nine. And then we'll have a final exam that's comprehensive, but is weighted heavily toward chapters seven, eight, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, there will be a attendance component. How do you attend an online course? Well, the way you attend an online course is that you make sure that you log in once or twice every week, that you complete all of the assignments, especially the discussions, and that, uh, and that you engage the course. So people who are constantly um, signing into the course, uh, doing the readings, doing the assignments, uh, will have no trouble getting an extra 30 points. People who will have missed assignments, people who, um, who don't log in during the course of a week will lose points. And so it will be hard, but some students will manage to not receive 30 out of 30 points on this um, normal 90, 80, 70, 60 grading scale. Uh, I go by points. So if you get an A on an assignment, it's not like 4.0 or B is 3.0, but rather those assignments. All the, all the assignments will be um, based on specific numbers of points. And you'll just add them together and divide them by the total number of possible points. There'll be one or two um, extra bonus assignments that you'll have during the course of the semester. They won't be where you come to me and say, is there any way I can get some extra points? Rather, they'll uh, meet and match some of the goals of the course. Uh, one of the things that we'll be doing early in the semester is that I am going to give you a reading assignment uh, from a chronicle of higher education, talking about students coping with uh, coronavirus and sort of the aftermath of coronavirus and uh, struggles that students have had. And I'll invite you guys to respond and react to that. I think that could be something that allows you to get your feelings out, get you a chance to practice your writing before you have the assignment, but also gets you a chance to get a few extra points if you want to engage the course a little more than to just do the uh, normal assignments. And there'll probably be at least one more other opportunity beyond that.
expect there to be a chance to get about 10 points more than the 400 total points in the course. Um, there's a section on, on technical requirements and exam submission that I encourage you to read. And then finally, um, the course outline is on page three. Uh, you should look very closely at that. Uh, every semester, I have a student who says, I, I was confused I, about the uh, when something was due. I lost track of this. Now, although the D2L has assignment due dates and the syllabus has assignment due dates, one of the big dangers of summer is that it goes by quickly and other things are going on in our lives. So knowing and being aware of when assignments are due and taking those due dates seriously is something that is the difference between getting the 80 that you deserve, right? I don't think a lot of us are taking this course because, you know, we just wanted a D for degree. Most of us are, are very ambitious, right? We're trying to get through our academic careers just that much faster by doing something in the summertime. And, uh, and, I, and I want you know, there, you don't speed your graduation by taking classes you don't pass, right? Um, but also, I think you, you want to get the good grade that, uh, that you deserve and that will reflect well on you. And so that's something that I'm hoping that, um, that I can facilitate for you. And the best advice I can give you is keep track of due dates, keep track of assignments, and... Uh, Feel free to contact me if you have any questions or concerns. Uh, you should definitely read about academic integrity. There'll be a question on academic integrity on the quiz. Um, there is a little outline of what the top 10 list will be um, and how to do it. Uh, all sorts of information in clement weather. If we have a hurricane. There was actually a year when we had a hurricane. Um, so. If if, it, if a hurricane hits, we're apt to have uh, power outages and things. Obviously, if you're not in uh, North Georgia right now, uh, you might have weather that's different from my weather. Feel free to contact me if something has happened adverse in your life where you need a little bit of um, you know, added grace. And uh, I, I try to be open-minded and I try to be helpful as far as that's concerned. What always happens when I have my introduction in a face-to-face -face class is I say, does anybody have any questions? And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity to uh, learn from other people's questions right now. But what I'd like to do is, with your permission, if you have any questions, if I take out the identifying information, I would like to in the announcements tell people, you know, I had this question and I'd like to answer it for all of you. So of course, if you send me a personal, something personal and you don't want it, you know, I, I won't tell everybody, you know, about it. But, but if you, um, but if you ask a good question that I think a lot of people will uh, benefit from, I'll, I'll send you an email back that says, do you mind if I answer this for everyone? And, uh, I think that a lot of people can benefit. If you have a question and you've asked somebody else in the class, know for a fact that that's almost as, that's a definite indicator that it's the kind of question that maybe everybody should be getting the answer to. Because I, I definitely want to have the communication be open and I definitely want to be available for everyone this semester. And uh, hopefully I can Hopefully I can help you all. So if you have any questions for me, send me an email. Uh, if you need to talk to me face to face, we can set up a Teams meeting. Um, if it's an emergency, you know, say so, and I will try to get back in touch with you as quickly as I can. So good luck, everybody, and uh, read closely this week. And if you feel like it would be beneficial, you can go ahead and start reading chapters one, two, and three in the uh, Logic of American Politics textbook. Note too that Sage, uh, the publisher of the um, 
of the book has a, a student resources page. So if you type in logic of the logic of American politics, uh, SAGE, S-A-G-E, um, you should be able to um, you should be able to get um, some uh, added resources such as the key terms that might be useful to you. Uh, don't let that be in, instead of buying a book or renting a book, um, but it could be helpful to you uh, anyway. Uh, good luck, everybody, and I'll talk to you again next week.